this Sunday's readings remind us and draw our attention to water, a glimpse of that thirst-quenching beauty of Christ's gift at Easter, pointing us to the truth that Jesus is the well of living water. Our gospel, then, is that wonderful telling of the story of Jesus at the well with the Samaritan woman. It's a long gospel. John spills a lot of ink telling this story. So the lectionary provides us with two options, a long option and a short option. The long option is long. The short option, however, misses some really key elements about the Samaritan woman. It still reveals that Jesus is the Savior of the world and the one who quenches all thirst, but it lacks the revelation of the Samaritan woman as an apostle of Christ's mission. The shorter version cuts out her self-revelation, which leads to her conversion. The short version unfortunately misses the reality that women are often the ones who lead us to the truth about Christ, about our own desire to be known and accepted by God, and so often show us how to evangelize and live out our Christian faith. The Samaritan woman, then, is a key figure in the expansion of Jesus' revelation and mission. She is a prophetic voice longing for the spring of eternal life. So I edited it. You got a mixture of both. Longer than the short version, short shorter than the long version because she tells us something true something true about our faith so this week I've been watching a bit of TV I think you guys are going to think I'm either watching movies or TV and I kept noticing one commercial in particular a commercial for Stella Artois the Belgian beer hopefully none of you know it Now, this is not your typical beer commercial. There's no wild party, no fancy social life, or a promise of a good time. Instead, there's Matt Damon. Whatever it means to you, huh? (laughs) And Matt Damon in this commercial speaks to the fact that water is essential to the lives we live. He then points to women as prophets of our own time as they are the ones who bear the burden of finding and collecting clean drinking water around the world. Women who thirst to provide for their families. These women that Matt Damon speaks about are a prophetic voice calling out to all of us to recognize the human right to life and the necessity of clean safe, living water. Of course, the commercial doesn't end there. He goes on to sell you a Stella Artois chalice, out of which I'm sure you can drink their beer. The proceeds benefiting water.org, a nonprofit working to bring sustainable, clean drinking water projects to those in need in Africa, Asia, Latin America, and the Caribbean. It fits well with our readings this week. During the third week of Lent, our attention is being drawn to water. So it may be appropriate for us to briefly examine the global water crisis. A few facts from water.org. Roughly 700 million people lack access to clean drinking water. That's about twice the population of the United States. Women and children, often the daughters of these families, bear the primary responsibility for collecting water, which in some communities can take upwards of six hours a day to go to the source, collect, and return, making the opportunity for schooling or commerce or building up the community to be awfully difficult. 
these women show us how hard it can be to prosper without clean water. They too thirst for the living water. In our gospel today, the Samaritan woman encounters Jesus at Jacob's well while drawing water for her family, likely a daily chore and a reality. Their thirst brings them together. Imagine Jesus. He's been walking this dry, hot hillside. He's hot and thirsty. The woman, too, thirsts to have the burdensome work of hauling water completed for just another day. And even though culturally and socially their interaction was a risky one, Jews and Samaritans don't talk. They definitely don't use the same well. And a Jewish man most incredibly is not going to encounter a Samaritan woman. But their encounter nourishes both of them. They sit and talk and listen to each other. Through their mutual acceptance, the walls, the boundaries, the hostilities, and the hatreds between Jews and Samaritans that have long separated them melt away and disappear. The Samaritan woman comes to understand who Jesus is, and Jesus reveals to her who herself is as well. Her interaction with Jesus filled her with the living water that made her an apostle, one who invited others into a similar encounter with Jesus. The church offers us this story in the third week of Lent to help us meditate on the woman and her own transformation. It reminds us that our faith, each one of us, is based in a personal encounter with Christ. An encounter whose effect on us is like that of refreshing water, water filling us and bubbling over. The Samaritan woman, women around the world who struggle for clean water, maybe even the women at St. Ben's, any person whose prophetic voice reveals God to the world around us reminds us of Jesus' living well. Reminds us that each of us has the potential to overflow Christ's love and share that with the community around us. Our faith will only grow if that water overflows and the beauty of our life in Christ attracts people to the faith. We are a well, that thirst-quenching love when we reach out to those in need, when we draw others into an encounter with Christ, when we worship by the witness of our joy. May this Eucharist sustain us and fill us like water bubbling over into joyful expressions of being loved just as who we are that we are impelled to continue our relationship with Jesus and then share that love with others.